This is a uh, video about a turbo that I purchased from Bison Performance for my Grand National. This is a 6262 turbo that uh, we had an issue with it yesterday. After about a mile it was installed, well I'm sorry, after about uh, a mile after running it on three consecutive boost pulls. Within a few minutes we had an issue with the uh, with the wheel making contact with the uh, with the compressor housing causing it to obviously make a noise it was shut down evaluated to find that uh, this wheel here made contact with the compressor housing in the shaft bent and uh, we immediately took it apart to see what the issue was uh, there is the speculation from the builder that uh, it was due to oil starvation in which uh, after about a mile running 60 psi of oil pressure uh, I was highly skeptical of that uh, assumption at first so I decided to take it upon myself to take the turbo apart because I have some knowledge on the turbos as well as mechanical um, capability to assess the, the damage myself here's the uh, compressor housing uh, which you can see where the wheel made contact with the compressor housing itself so what I'm doing today is making a document <clears throat> of, uh, I guess, a, a study based upon a flat granite countertop surface with some, you know, clock references to show where I feel and the reason why we had an issue with the wheel making contact with the, uh, with the compressor housing. This is uh this is what's called the CHRA. This is the center point of the turbo. I've made some reference marks, uh, which you'll see here in a little bit. The reason why I made these reference marks, but I feel that this this CHRA housing was machined in a way to where it wasn't even with the uh, with perpendicular where the shaft would come out and spin in relation to the flat surface. And I'm going to show you based upon a level where the level bubble will move based upon clock movement with these pieces being put together on a flat surface and what you can see right here at this point that my bubble is completely you know in the middle and we'll, we'll take some take some readings with this this piece to make sure that it is nice and flat this is a stable level this is not your typical level that you would find at your Home Depot, this is a uh, this is a very precise magnetic machinist level. As you can see, there's just I'd say there's just a very minimal amount of unevenness with this compressor backing plate. Uh, actually, I need to even it up here a little bit. Twelve, six, three, nine, and just take some bubble measurements there and you can see where yeah it feels like everything's pretty much right on round track we'll flip this thing over make sure that uh, well three would be now be nine and same thing there two and eight got some arrows to make sure that I have it lined up right. Arrow X, X, arrow. So now what we can do is, you know, just to double check sanity here, let's put a machine of straight edge on here and take this one and a half thousandths feeler gauge. Nothing seems to be out of whack there. Nothing there. And then we'll check in another time. Yeah, like 10 and 4. I'd say that's pretty flat. We'll flip it over. Check it on the surface here, too. Appears to be flat. Check it 
check the other side. Cannot slide anything underneath. Now just for kicks, I'll show you that. The level itself. Doesn't appear to be bent or uneven. Make sure that's settled. So we have a level granite countertop. This appears to be level, maybe just a hair off. And now we'll get to the point to where we're looking at where I feel we have issues. So just to go over, there is no O ring on here. So this is metal to metal as if it would be bolted together. So there is no pieces of rubber that would keep it from being out of level. So I'm going to arrow 12, exit 6, make my lines up here. Again, this is a magnetic level. This allows me to put this onto the CHRA surface and check to make sure that it is nice and flat, which I cannot slide anything underneath it at this point. So immediately what you'll see as I turn and twist this around, that the bubble is starting to move towards the X. Notice how the bubble is actually getting to be more in the center now. And when my arrow comes towards 5, it looks like it's even pushing more towards that side. Now I realize this bubble is not moving very much, but is my understanding that there cannot be hardly any play whatsoever in between where the shaft comes up through the CHRA in relation to a flat plane surface because if not, you'll have this happen. Again, it looks to be center. You come up to 11 and 5, and that's where the biggest variance looks to be, right about right there. You can really see the difference here and there. At about 5.30, so what we'll do is we'll take this off, put it right back. And it appears that there is a run out in this area somewhere. There it's flat, dead nuts, bubbles in the middle. Again, it falls to this side. And there it falls to that side again. Middle. Falls to the side. Middle. Falls to the side. So there's, there is something that is not even in this area that is making it do this. Pause to the side. 